This is me in Bali in 2015 trying to capture a nudie branch with a GoPro. <clears throat> Gosh. And this is me capturing another nudie branch in Sipadan in 2022 with a camera that costs less than 400 US dollars. What if I told you that this video and this photo and this photo were taken with a 400 US dollar camera perfect for casual diving photogs? Hi, I'm Chuck and I'm one of those divers. So what does a casual diver really need? One, something that can shoot wide angle and macro is small and doesn't need a casing. Why? Because I'm there to dive. I like to keep my hands free of lugging a truck around. Two, something cheap, preferably less than 500 US dollars. Three, something that can go to the magical depth of 30 meters. Sorry, TG4, TG5, and TG6. Why 30 meters? Because that's the max depth you're supposed to go to for your typical leisure dives. And you don't want a camera that can go for some dives, but not the others, right? Okay, so the air really thins out at cameras that don't need a casing at 30 meters. We got the Olympus TG Tracker, and the GoPros, and all the GoPro imitations. <laughs> yes, they're all action cams, great for skateboarding and hospital footage, but pretty crap at catching a nudie branch. And then I discovered a sub-400 US dollar camera that took these images, and this image, and this image, and this video, and this video. Hashtag no filter, hashtag no filter. This is the Nikon Coolpix W300, the successor to the AW130, which I also bought. It costs about 1600 ringgit or about 350 US dollars. And most importantly, it can go to 30 meters without a casing. But how? <laughs> Let's take a look inside. So to open it, you basically press this little button here, turn it, and it flips open. And there you have your O ring, okay? Another rubber seal here. And you have your battery, which you just flip this up and the battery comes out. You can pop it out, put a new one in. You press the SD card, pops out, put it back in. I like to download my photos after every dive just in case. And then there's a little uh, micro USB uh, charger and data cable here. So you can either charge it, you don't actually need a card, we do it, you can close this up there, which the laptop works fine, okay? So when you want to close it, you take your little uh, blower thingy and then you just blow along the sides, seal it up, hear that lock, and you're good, and you're good to go. When I don't need it, I just slip it into my BCD pocket. Honestly, on boring dives, I can totally forget it's even there, until I see something cool. When there's a strong current, I can hold onto a rope with both hands. And I don't have to pass a giant truck to the poor boatman when I'm done with my dive. So one of the comments I always get is like, what, you're not scared, uh? don't put your camera in a casing when you go underwater. Well, I mean, to be honest, uh, this is actually the third Nikon Coolpix that I've actually uh, used. The first two, uh, one actually uh, leaked within the warranty period, so actually Nikon replaced it for me, maybe there was a problem with the seal, but they replaced a brand new camera within a month. Second one actually deep sticks maybe after two years, and then that was the AW130, and now I'm on the, uh, the W300. And the W300 has basically uh, been bulletproof for about three and a half years now. Okay, you might think, two years? <laughs> that sounds expensive. But hey, underwater casings also leak, and you'll also need to replace them, and that costs about 60 to 70% of the price of a new camera. So just think of it as buying a brand new camera instead of a casing. And it'll last you more than two years after you learn one important lesson. So best practice is, take it back to your room, and then open it within the confines of your room. Make sure you use one of those dust things to remove any bit of sand, and you should have a pretty good seal. Because the last thing that you want to do is open this guy anywhere near sand. No, Nikon isn't paying me anything for this. The real sponsor to this video are the designer dive mask straps that I make. Watercolor.org. Check these babies out. And 5% of all revenue will always go to an ocean conservation effort. In this case, Reef Check Malaysia. To check it out, visit watercolor.org slash reefmind. Okay, so how do I take these shots? Well, to take these shots, I have one little secret, which is my camera in my right hand and a USD $10 dive torch in my left. For macro shots, I put it in macro mode, pop the light maybe from a left or right or angle, and shoot. For all the other shots, <laughs> well, I just leave it in underwater mode and let the camera do everything else. The pros? Land shots are pretty good. The color reproduction at depths of up to 10 meters are amazing. It's got a kind of slight desaturated epic feel to it. Autofocus is pretty decent. Uh, the macro with good lighting is damn, damn good. Probably only second to the TG5 at this price point. If you can't seem to get the right focus, you can focus on something nearby, press the video button which will cause it to lock the focus, and then bring your subject into focus instead. 
level, and the camera actually tells you how deep you are. How cool is that? If you're like me, you're one of those people that occasionally forgets to bring your dive thumb along. So now you have a backup. Cons? Well, it does have a habit of making everything extremely blue past the 15 meter mark. Still haven't found a way to get past this. Also, for really, really macro shots, the TG5 Super Macro Mode is still the king. But hey, they have to bring a truck with them. In summary, if you're looking for a camera to put in your BCD pocket, this is the one I'd highly recommend. If you'd like to see more footage or a more <laughs> in-depth video, <laughs> let me know in the comments below. And if you like those mouse straps, visit watercolor.org to grab one. It would mean the world to me. Safe diving, have fun.